just figuring out the music. Apparently the gimbal decided to die. <laughs> We've been having an interesting morning, friends, with the technology, I have to say. And even now I can still tell that the stream is lagging. I don't know why. So it's just the TV. Okay. So we tried to do everything this morning with stream. We took down the one camera from the stove top yesterday, just because we're starting to fill all the holes in the wall. So we'll make do without it today as much as we can. But yeah, other than that, like we went to turn on the stream this morning and like the other cameras weren't working because we unplugged the one. So sorry if any weird stuff happens on stream today. <laughs> but other than that, hope everyone is doing good. We have a very nice sunny summer day out here. Lots of building houses in the background. And we'll do a little bit of outdoor cooking as well today. It's all good? Okay. That's what I'm seeing as well, Rook. It's off just a tad, but not terrible. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I have no idea. So just bear with us, <laughs> right? Sammy breaks it, but he's also the person that can fix it. So we can't hate on Sammy. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing too, Rook. But it seems like it's catching up now. Just a little bit leggy there. But anywho, we're here ready to get cooking. I don't know if you saw the email notification, but this is the last week of cooking in this kitchen. This is what? The third, third stream kitchen? In three and a half years? Then the next one will be the fourth. And then when we get into the truck, the fifth stream kitchen that we've used. Nuts. And let me scroll up. Welcome everyone in. Hi to Kimmers. How are you doing? Oi Rook. Good to see you. Hippie. Welcome, welcome. And we got a Mickey in here. Mickey, I'm so sorry to hear that your hay fever has been really bad still. I hope, hope it gets on the men because that's not a very fun way to spend summertime, right? But yeah, other than that guys, we've been busy, busy packing everything up. It's really just the kitchen that we have left and we're leaving that until Sunday to pack up all together. Maybe start a little bit on Saturday. We'll see. Maybe we'll fill in some time while the pizza dough is proofing. All right. I'm going to post up our menu for today. So pretty easy meal going down. We're going to share one portion with our friend Paul. So pan seared king salmon that was caught by Zach going with a roasted beef tenderloin. So the beef tenderloin is whole, it's not steaks. So we're gonna do almost like a reverse sear with that. And then creamy dill potatoes, which are kind of like a Ukrainian style. So you boil them and then after they're boiled and nice and tender, you mix them with butter and cream and dill. You can throw in anything else in there that you may want. And it's just so heckin' good in like the first of the summer and then simple keep things healthy just a bit of asparagus it looks really nice so yeah like i said these meals this week coming up is we're working on clearing out our freezer and the rest of the fridge so it's not going to be long long streams because we have to keep packing up the house right this is kind of the biggest Maybe not the biggest move, but it's very different because we're also downsizing so much at the same time. So a lot of organization involved, let's just say that. Okay, let's get into it. We'll make up a list here together and then away we go. And yeah, hope everyone has had a great week so far. Hi, Tom Tom, sounds yum. Yeah, I'm excited for this today. A little surfing turf, that's the last piece of salmon that was in the freezer and I was like we're saving this for us okay so the first thing that we're gonna do I think the longest cook time is gonna be the beef tenderloin so I'll just write down beef and what we're gonna do so we have to season that first and then low and slow we're gonna just do it in the Traeger I don't want to do too much cooking inside today because it's really hot out we don't want to heat up the house too much, right? So we'll season it and then we'll do 220 or 225 Fahrenheit in the Traeger. So low and slow on the whole piece of beef 
until the internal temperature reaches 120 Fahrenheit. So that's like a medium rare temp if you were to cook a steak. We bring it up to that slowly. We'll see when we cut into it later. And what that does is that first kind of slow cook is you eliminate the gray kind of crust or layer on the outside of meat if you do a hot cook. So the entire tenderloin is going to be like beautifully pink or red inside all throughout. And then you just have a nice sear on the outside. So 225 Fahrenheit and for the size of meat today, that's probably not going to take very long, maybe an hour and a half. Like I said, it's more about the internal temp than anything. So 120 degrees Fahrenheit internal. And then after that, so we let it rest. And then we have the choice to sear it up even more in a high heat sort of scenario, which we can definitely do. And then because we rest kind of first when it comes off the slow cooking stage, you don't have to rest it again after searing it. You can just cut right into it and serve it up. I love reverse sear for that method. And it's really good for just larger pieces of meat. So anything from roast to nice, thick, thick cut steaks or even pork chops. Okay, so that's the beef. And then after that, we'll probably work into the potatoes because they take a little bit of time to boil. And we know we need butter and cream as well as dill. And I have a bit of shallot and tarragon that we'll add in just a little bit of leftover in the fridge. Okay, there's that. And then after that, we can maybe think about the salmon. Get it seasoned up. It's a full, full, like nice piece like this with the skin on. And so we're going to pan sear the salmon, start it like that. And because we are going to be finishing the beef in the oven to sear it at a nice higher heat, we'll also finish the salmon in there at the same time and probably even put the asparagus on the pan to just quickly roast. Easy peasy. So nice, almost like a one pan meal and then just one quick pot of potatoes on the stove top. So not too much cooking inside. And a lot of restaurants will cook their fish that way where you start it searing in a pan and then you finish it in the oven. It just gives a nice, kind of more even cook on the fish. It doesn't dry out as much on the outside and then obviously the inside stays nice and moist. It does sound yum, thanks Mickey. And the piece of salmon today, I'll just quickly grab it so we can look at the thickness and the size of it because that will help us determine our cook time. Oh, okay, so there's no skin on it actually. And it's two separate pieces. Is that why you said you're not having salmon today, Sam? I mean, you can have some of mine. So if we look at this, just how I vacuum sealed it, so you can see the two different fillets there and there's no skin on, but look at the nice kind of fatty layers that we can see, right? So these two pieces to pan sear and then quickly roast, not even 10 minutes, I would say. And then bottom of the list is just our asparagus. So like I said, we'll just roast that in a pan. And probably because we still have some of this really nice chimichurri compound butter that Sammy made on stream. What was it? A few weeks back now. Probably just going to dress the asparagus with this. So it's butter that has been mixed with parsley, cilantro chilies, a little bit of vinegar and lemon juice, and then salt and pepper. So chimichurri compound butter. Oh, and maybe a bit of garlic in there too, I think. So, so good. Okay, I'm gonna go out. We can start the Traeger together and then we'll come inside, doctor up the beef and then get it roasting. And while that kind of carries on on its own, We'll finish the rest of the meal up together. 
Oh, you don't have it outside. Okay. You're just charging my phone for a bit right now. Okay. Grab the meats. Oh, I put it in the other other fridge. Yeah, beef tenderloin is not typically a cut of meat that Sam and I often eat or cook. I believe we have this in our life because one of our friends wanted us to cook beef tenderloin. So we just bought an entire whole one and then butchered it ourselves. Hi, Dust Pirate. How are you? Oh, yeah, everyone must be kind of confused with the moving schedule that we put out. It's very quiet in here today, but that's a-okay. Everyone's just listening. You thought the cooking streams were over? Nope. nope. We'll finish them up this week, Dust. Exclamation All the way only till Saturday. Saturday is the last cooking stream and it's a pizza day. Woohoo! And then Sunday, we tear down the entire like kitchen studio, let's say. So you guys will be on the mobile camera on my phone and you get to see how we take apart the studio together. I think it's gonna be really fun. Thanks, Mish. You thought they were over too, see? <laughs> we put a, put a command out and still no one reads it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shot. Last little bit of pizza. Why? Because there's cheese and pepperoni in the freezer, so we can't not. Yeah, yep. and if you were around at the beginning of the year, like Mickey said, I remember when you put the kitchen up. It's true, Mish. The true friends are here anyways. Oh, I guess it does say pack and streams. It's mostly not going to be pack and stream today, but I think uh, we just did that to kind of get people in the loop of thinking like that. Hilarious. Yeah. Hi, potato. I'm first. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. When will we begin streaming again? In July. Yes, you're correct, Fides. So we are leaving this area on the 30th traveling to the ferry nice and early and then we'll be we're trying to travel all the way to jasper where our friends are and stay overnight there with them that's a pretty long drive i think it'll be like a good eight hours or so and like i said we'll spend the night just so it's not a long long trip and then on the 31st we'll keep going to edmonton should arrive there kind of during the day sometime and then probably july 1st I know it says there's no stream, so we'll probably just take some time off to rest, right? Because it's going to be a lot of stuff going on. And then the next schedule, July 2nd to 4th, we'll do like some exploring kind of IRL streams around Edmonton, reacquainting ourselves with the area, our friends, all of that stuff. There's a lot of great places there to eat. And there's a beautiful river valley to explore all together. I'm taking you guys on an adventure where I took Caitlin the first time to have a date. Yeah, yeah. We'll go to the Italian center. I can't wait. And Mary, thank you so much, Mary. Woohoo! Two I months. You. you know what Sammy said this morning, Mary? He's like, Kate, I put you up on the big screen just like Mary does. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Is your brother all okay with the kitchen being used for streaming? So they live very differently compared to a lot of people. Very minimalist, let's say. Rando and Finn. Yes, Torino. Thank you for the 22 months, my dude. Almost two years together. Oh yeah, indeed. So yeah, Mish, is we, those kind of first few days, it might be IRL food streams or we have to work on building a little outdoor kitchen set up for the stream. First three days will be IRL food streams. Just relaxing and then we'll figure it out. And yeah. Talk and do other yeah. Things. I'm not stressing about cooking the first couple days. We will be going out. To yeah. So, yeah, we first have to work on building a little outdoor kitchen setup where we can stream from. Great thing about where we're going is it doesn't rain nearly as much as it does here, and the weather is quite consistent. So, beautiful sunny days. And honestly, even if it does rain, it's not cold. Yeah, he doesn't mind the good food too much. That's exactly it. Great, Mish. 
can't complain. And hi, Kaylee. And yeah, so once that outdoor setup is done, then we'll probably make plans to go grab, go down and grab the truck. I know Sam says he wants to make our truck guys a brisket and something delicious to thank them for hanging on to it for so long for us. Okay, let's get into cooking. And if you have any other questions about the future of the stream, feel free to ask away. We're also gonna start our vlog on YouTube that we upload once a week. Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that's gonna be happening is a weekly YouTube vlog. Keep everyone in the loop that way too. And hi, Kami, good to see you. Okay, this is pretty juicy. So I'm gonna just open it in the sink and then we'll pop it onto a plate. I don't have to really tie this, do I? No, I'm asking, no, it's not going to affect no. the cook. Oh, I see how this is. Yeah. I thought it was like two separate pieces, but no. it's not. It's the, the head of the... Deadly. Okay, that's a deadly looking piece. Holy. Clean, yeah, so this has already been cleaned. So this comes off of the tip. If you were to buy a whole beef tenderloin from the store, this comes off of one of the ends. Oh, you're in the office with the interns. Well, hope everything goes well today, Kami. And hi, silent one. Welcome, welcome. as well as Bonk. Hello, friends, welcome. We've missed everyone. You love salmon, you're very interested to see how I make mine. Oh, well, glad you're here today because honestly, I do some pretty simple cooking with salmon. You let the fish speak for itself, right? Okay, do we want anything special for the seasoning on this today? Yeah, I think just because we're gonna have a lot of other yummy flavors with the potatoes and the asparagus with the compound butter, probably just keep this pretty simple. We're gonna make a nice little crust up though. So we'll do, we don't have any mustard, Sam, so. No, I have grainy, but it doesn't help with adhering. I can do hot sauce then. So just to help something with the salt and pepper sticking, either a Dijon mustard or hot sauce. Nothing too sugary or sweet though. Oh God, mayo, Sam, that's not a good offer. That's scary. Yeah, hot sauce. Okay, and then before I get my hands messy, this is gonna be popped up on a oven rack so that the air can circulate properly underneath. That's also how you get a more even cook. Yeah, QP. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Thank you, Bonk. Thank that you. is what I often follow. One. Yeah, Sammy used to say that all the time. Kiss that shit. I was thinking hoisin rollo, but then when it comes to searing after, the hoisin is gonna burn. Yeah, we can't do anything sugary for the crust. Cute. Good morning, FCB. <laughs> Language, please. Okay, that should be enough. Holy Mary, thank you for the thousand bits. That's so crazy to me that we're over the halfway mark. What the heck? Okay, so now we massage it up. Get it nicely coated. It's the last of our own rook. I used some of the scorpion. No, sorry. Is the scorpion one? No, reaper? He can't keep track of his hot sauces. Yeah. 
I used some of the Dave's scorpion pepper in the last batch of hot turkey. honey. Holy shit. So, so good. good. So good. Okay. Just shaking this up. Little container with just salt and pepper mix. Morning, Cookie. Good morning, Cookie. Thank you, Kame, for the 185 bits. Even it up. 508,000 for that crazy food truck. Is it a food truck or is it just going to be a truck with food? <laughs> Honestly, though. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. Cookie, thank you very much for the thousand. Everyone's just coming in with so much generosity. Guys, I haven't even cooked anything yet, please. Ah! <laughs> yeah, let's not get philosophical. That's a bit much for the last week here. 16 million Scoville Death Nut 3.0, by far hottest thing you've ever done. Do you still have nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I had to. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're getting excited for all of the things. I'm going to leave the end. I'm going to leave the end unseasoned. This looks pretty good. We can always add more after, but we can't take it away. So before I wash my hand, pop our tray over here. And thank you, Sammy, for being the train. The train driver? Thanks, friends, for the level two hype train already as well. Thank you, Kimmers, for the 500. Kaylee with the 25. Yeah, a food truck vehicle. <laughs> Me neither, Cookie. I can't believe this is the last week. Okay, so this is the top side. So we're literally just going to do that. I know that it kind of opens up here. I might just put one string around the center. That way it'll cook nice and evenly. Holy! FCB! An absolute legend! Okay, have good meetings, Kame. We'll maybe see you later. If not, take care and thank you for the bitty. Yeah! Thank you so, so much. Rafuel says, do you have any tips, tricks, or techniques for pickling cucumbers? Okay, who? Someone posted in our Discord a bit back an amazing half sour pickle recipe. Who was that? One of the tricks to keeping cucumbers crunchy when you pickle, put bay leaf in the jar. That's, a, that's one that I think Eric taught us, or Eric taught me. That helps keep things crisp. Crazy. If you need any canning help, Kanara. Yeah, go to Kanara. <laughs> Joyce, thank you very, very much as well. 11 months together, almost a year. I can't wait to go down to Vegas and hang with Joyce. So excited for that. Friends, level five already? What the heck? Okay, let me get my butcher's twine. So this is what we want. Comes in a nice big roll. Just kind of measure it out ahead of time. Always cut more than you think you need. Otherwise it's just a waste, right? Yeah, so much good eats. And then another food and drink streamer is moving there, Joyce, BB Bubs. Not sure if you watch him, oh, yeah. but I feel like you guys would really get along. Him and his wife, Jess, amazing people. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. So now we're just going to slip this underneath. So like here. So see if I hold this up, you see how this piece, this of the muscle wants to fall open and same with here where it was trimmed. We're just going to bring that back together so it cooks a bit more evenly. You go, you don't have to go too tight. Just enough to hold it together. Perfect. And then before we carve that later, we'll take that off. We'll be good to go. Thanks for the shout out for that, Sama. 
I think you did. Oh yeah, it is three Bs. Three Bs and then the bubs. Yeah, go check them out. Legend. All right. This is going on to the Traeger. What did you set it to? Uh, 195. Sammy set the Traeger to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. We are going to be working on this, bringing it up low and slow to an internal temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a nice medium rare that allows us to get a little bit more heat on it later when we sear it without it overcooking. Definitely, if you're gonna cook this style, you want an instant read thermometer for later. And Barracuda, thank you very much for the three months in a row already. Three months in and you've already made our bacon recipe? Oh, I'm just putting it on this. I just like, oh, one thing before we do this, I have to line the bottom of the tray with foil. Yeah. Otherwise the juices just make an insane mess. Okay. I always almost forget that. So I'm lining the pan then? Line the pan, yeah. Sam's doing something different today, but it's no, fine. You're, you're still gonna... Hi, PK Uno, welcome. Like we're still putting this on it? Yes. Okay. I thought you were saying that you're putting that on the Traeger and this will just be underneath. I'm like, that sounds crazy. Yeah. This oh. is gonna go on the Traeger like this so it cooks all the way around it. Okay. Because if you put it on that, Silas and Penn, we got a new person with our crew today. Welcome in, Silas, and thank you very much for the sub at Tier 1. Welcome to the kitchen crew. Let us know if you have any questions at all about what goes down here. Okay, we're quickly heading outside, just popping this in our oven. If you're cooking inside, more than welcome to use your oven inside. It's too hot today to do that, though. It is set up. Oh, camera's set up now again. Hopefully it doesn't blarg. Woohoo! And yes, we are Rook. So right now we only have the extra large egg and the mini max. Got rid of the large because it's just not the best part of the trio anymore. We found that it would probably be better if we got another extra large. If we felt like we needed it, should be able to get that even. There we go. So that's how that's going to roast. And yeah, so we want to maybe potentially get another XL just so that all of the accessories, the egg accessories can work together in the same eggs. But definitely this Traeger is coming with. And it's a good thing we got that Traeger when we did because we contacted our, our grill people like a week later and they're sold out for about a year now. And thanks, friends. Didn't even realize that we finished our hype train out there. <laughs> I love that. Cookie, your little emote that you got, hype disguise the kitty. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking, what? One hour until we check that, or should we do like a 45 minute or a 30 minute timer? Okay, so we'll do 30 minutes on the clock for our piece of meat. We'll check it then with the thermometer, see how it's cooking along. You always wanna be checking a bit ahead of the time that you think you'll need. Cause well, every piece of meat cooks differently, right? That's that, can get some of this stuff away. Waiting on a curing salt delivery before you make more bacon. Family put orders in from the sample of the first run. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. You share with family and friends and then it's just a never ending bacon train. <laughs> and yeah, save all the recipes from today. 
They are money. Maybe we'll go over a little bit while we have some time. They're all really good recipes that I found for this. Yeah, slow roasted beef tenderloin from Serious Eats. You're waiting on a gochujang delivery? How much? <laughs> so this is what they say about beef tenderloin. Roasted beef tenderloin dries out easily if it's not cooked properly. This method yields a nicely brown crust, ultra tender center, and perfectly pink meat from edge to edge. So they give the option of salting the piece of meat the night before and then leaving it in the fridge overnight to kind of dry out. You'll get a better sear that way. I didn't go for that and that's fine. It'll still turn out amazing. <laughs> Seeing if they do anything else kind of special. So they finish this actually under the broiler is what they do. Or they also give the option to finish that piece of meat on the stove top with butter in a pan. Deadly. And they say, so the center cut beef tenderloin is called a Chateau Briand. If you're looking for this piece, that's what you should be asking for. Plan on half a pound of meat per person. Eight ounces. Oh, baby. Why not what, Rook? It does work better. I typically do that for like a pork belly if I roast it. Why I didn't do this on the piece of meat today because it was still thawing. Supposed to get your iCombi installed on Monday. It's here, but the vent hood isn't. Rolo. So amazing. Are you going to use that for making the ice cream bases and stuff? Because we used to do that in the circulator, in the sous vide. Where is my listy poo here? Okay, beef season. Now it's cooking. I said about one and a half hours that it'll take to cook there to 120 Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, just wondering if you had a reason. It was frozen still. You're adding some savory and bakery items. That means you're killing it then, Rolo. Congratulations. I would love to come visit an ice cream place with savory and baked goods. Yes, please. Can I have ice cream inside the baked goods? <laughs> ice cream sandwich. Okay, next one we're gonna go over. This is a good one, actually. Not a, or yeah, I was gonna say not a lot of people are comfortable cooking fish, nor do they know a lot about it, right? So I found a really good article, how to pan fry salmon fillets. <laughs> it's by J. Kenji Lopez. So I'm just gonna read it through because most people already know the way that he talks. Having a quick sip of coffee. So he says, I hate salmon with a passion. Chalky, dry, smelly, slimy skin, the worst of the worst when it comes to fish. That's exactly what Sam said to me this morning. Sammy said he doesn't think he likes salmon anymore after living here. <laughs> so Kenji says, at least that's what I would have said about a decade ago when the only salmon I had tasted was over poached at buffets or overcooked at restaurants that frankly didn't quite know what they were doing. Don't know if I was running the right circles, but it seemed de rigueur in my youth to cook salmon to a shade just past well done. We didn't seem to exit these culinary dark ages until sometime in the 90s, by which time my bias against the fish had already been firmly established. It's true. Growing up in like the 90s even, I'm a 90s baby. That's all it was, is fish cooked to like, <laughs> well, well done. Because <laughs> that's all people knew, right? Oh yeah, Stylus recently bought salmon, had no idea it was skin on, and you had to descale it. Did you eat the skin though? 
because you don't have to descale it if you're not going to eat the skin. I know, Daft. This is all I got left. Like one sip, dude. I crashed my coffee this morning. Yeah, I really chugged it. Okay, Kenji says, it wasn't until I started cooking in nice restaurants, the kind that I could never afford to go to as a civilian, that I realized it wasn't the salmon that was at fault, but rather the cook. <laughs> That's often the case, isn't it? Yeah, Timmy's run, not a chance. In our one small town, Torino, we got two Tim Hortons, just in case. <laughs> you ate the skin? Good one, Silas. Yeah, if you crisp it up, it's really nice. So good on you for descaling it and eating all the skins. So good for you. Yeah, if you grew up on jackfish and pickerel, like me too, Torino, eating fish skin is a no-go. Maybe that's why I'm so weird about it. Probably. It's like the salmon skin has to be very nice and crisp. Otherwise, I won't eat it. Yeah, because you don't eat that. Yeah, like the salmon skin sushi rolls are yummy. Okay, let's keep going. So Kenji has told us that it's not the salmon's fault because it's dry, it's the cook's fault. We know this. So properly cooked salmon is amazing, crisp, crackly, crunchy skin that can rival the best roast chickens, tender, moist, flavorful meat that melts across your tongue like butter. There's a reason after all why salmon is the most popular fish in the country. But even before we start cooking it, let's take a quick look at what you might find at the fish counter. That's fair too, because not everywhere gets the same cut of salmon. And that's why I specified today what we are using for salmon is king salmon. So some of the most pricey out there. Oh yes, Joyce, do it. So you'll need a little bit of a lower heat if you're gonna do crispy salmon skin. Otherwise I find it burns really quick. Yeah, like Bong said, just make sure they don't burn the skin. <laughs> but it's so, so good, Joyce. Like you can cook the salmon just skin side down, low and slow. The skin will crisp up and then the rest of the meat will just be unctuous. Okay, next one. So there was a time not long ago when salmon was just salmon. It was the pink fish that skinny people ordered at restaurants or fancy ladies in French hats would pick on or pick at a high class buffet. These days, diners are a little more aware of what's out there, or at least that there are options when it comes to specific salmon species. So king salmon, also known as Chinook, or most of the fishermen here just say spring salmon as well. I have the same gesture for money, pricey and crispy. <laughs> same, same, but different. And good morning time, okay? Hope you are well. All right, so king salmon is what we're using today. They say this is the largest salmon species and one of the most popular at the fish counter. In the wild, they can grow over 100 pounds and live for several years, making them prized amongst game fishermen. So I caught a spring salmon two years ago in the summertime when my friends took me out before the pandemic. And I believe it was 25 pounds was the whole fish. And it was beautiful. It was a lot of work, but worth it after you eat it. <laughs> so they say large thick fillets make for relatively easy cooking, though they are not the most flavorful species. I kind of have to talk against that. I think that is the best salmon around is king salmon. They say farm raised king salmon tend to be smaller with a bit more intramuscular fat, giving them more richness. So next one up, coho salmon. I've also caught that and they are smaller. So far smaller than king salmon with a more dense and bright flavorful flesh. So remember when we get like almost orange or like dark red colored flesh, that's the coho and it's still nice and thick. So that's the next kind of best one that I would say. And then the coho is really good for making like gravlax or a smoked salmon. Because of the dense flesh, it doesn't fall apart as easily. Makes sense. You're facing a big kitchen challenge today, never done it before, what's that? What's that? Maybe we can help. So next one, 
Also, my least favorite variety of salmon is sockeye. So they get their name from an indigenous word from the British Columbians here. Nothing to do with either socks or eyes. The sockeye is known for their deep red flesh and full flavor. They're a very strong tasting fishy salmon. Lasagna in a pressure cooker? How does this work? I just need to ask because I'm trying to imagine it. I'm scared kind of. Okay, so sockeye salmon, they are also quite small, which makes them difficult to cook because of the thinner fillets. It's really easy to overcook. Okay, next one he gives us is Arctic char, but they're actually not salmon. They have a similar reddish orange flesh colored by carotenoids from when they eat small shellfish like little shrimpies in the water. And so the Arctic char flavor and cooking qualities are quite similar to sockeye, but it's a bit fattier. Arctic char is your favorite fish? Yep. Wow. That's some of the slimiest. Yeah. But it doesn't stink. I guess. Yeah, it doesn't it's really slimy. stink. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Time okay. There's one video on YouTube. It is doable. What kind of pressure cooker are you using? I got questions. Chat's being way too quiet right now. Chat, are we scared? <laughs> Please. We ain't scared. Okay, so next thing he says, the goal when we cook salmon is to keep as much of the salmon below 140 degree Fahrenheit temperature range. So that's like getting cooked medium already internal if we compare it to like a steak. To do this, make sure you always cook your salmon <laughs> skin on, which we're not doing today. I don't actually know why those salmon pieces have the skin off. Must have been us just doing something different with it. They say if you're pan roasting it, even if you plan on serving it skinless, always cook it skin on. I have said that in the past though, right? Because it really does help the flesh of the fish stay nice and moist. Daph, your last lasagna, you did not pre-boil the pasta. You made fresh pasta, built the pan, and the pasta cooked in the oven. That's what we did. I'm so proud of you, Daph. Did it turn out amazing or what? So this is what Kenji says, by cooking the salmon with the skin on, you can alleviate any sort of overcooking problems on the outer layers of the flesh. The insulative layer of fat on the skin in between the fish acts as a heat barrier, transmitting heat to the interior flesh very, very slowly. So that means it cooks really nice and evenly. It was amazing, good. And even your enchiladas looked so heckin' good. Okay, I'm not gonna read through the rest of this because there's a lot. But definitely save the how to pan fry salmon filet. Save the article for yourself if you wanna get better at cooking fish. That's fair, yeah. Not boiling the pasta lets you get more layers, exactly. Okay, so next thing we're going to roll into here is our potatoes. I linked an awesome recipe, very, very similar to what we're going to do today. Ukrainian style cream dill potatoes. This is something that I grew up on, always going over to my Baba's place. So that's my grandma on my mom's side, which has Ukrainian origin and they're so, so good. Yeah, Torino would know, any other Ukrainian would know. Made dilly potatoes the other day. They're so simple. What is it, like four or five ingredients only? So we got the potato. I typically do butter. You need the cream and the dill, and then obviously salt and pepper. This is what she says. Recipe tips and tricks. Oh yeah, you use sour cream, so good for that little bit of like, just sourness. So this dish is best with potatoes that are brand new from the garden. 
So they're typically called new potatoes in the store. She says the little potatoes that you can buy in the stores, the baby ones will also work. And if you really have to, you can use full size potatoes and cut them up into cubes. The type of potato doesn't really matter. I honestly, I think it does a little bit. We want something with a nice thin skin so we can keep the skin on. But I don't think I would want to use russet potatoes, maybe a baby version of it. But just the skin of the russet potato, not going to be as good. So today we're using like a nice waxy Yukon gold. She says fresh dill, 100%. You can't make these potatoes with dried dill. It's just not a thing. Don't even attempt it. <laughs> it's coming from a very serious Ukrainian. So recipe size, six servings. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, let's get everything out and get on to it. We're gonna grab our potatoes in a nice pot. Yeah, Yukon Golds, so good. These are quite large today, but like she said, it's fine. We make it work. I just have to watch when we boil that they don't overcook. So we're gonna get a nice little pot here as well. Maybe we'll open this up just a touch. And good morning, White Dove. How's the day going? Good to see you too. Yeah, Sammy said this morning as we were starting stream, he's like, this is a nice little distraction from the mess that is our current lives. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know. We'll take care of that one. Whoa. That's probably more than enough for us. Hey, maybe that. Yeah. Potatoes are deceiving until you start cutting them up. Same with like cabbage. These are the ones your mom used? Yes. You get those up here and most of them are tiny. Ooh, that would be so nice, Torino. Okay, so first step, I mean, these have been washed. There's a couple of, I just call them boo-boos. A couple of boo-boos on the potato that we should get rid of before we start them in the pot. Carrots can be deceiving too. Yes. Yeah, that is true, Mish. Okay, so I'm just going to use my peeler and the little eye, the eye cleaner to get this stuff taken care of. We're just cleaning off anything that, well, we wouldn't want to eat. Might make it taste weird, right? But we really want to try to keep on as much skin as possible. Thanks, Mish, for that. And yeah, ever since I made these for Sam the first time, <laughs> it's like a staple now. Dilly potatoes. That's what we know them as. Okay, this we need to cut. Just cut a little bit more where it's discolored. There we go. Oh yeah, I haven't even shown. Look at this. Even all the knives have been packed. No more knives on the wall. Crazy. Two large taters per person, even if you're mashing them. Easy to do for each, which is no bueno when you got a portion size. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Do not want that. Are we moving, Silas? We are. <laughs> I love how this is like news to some people that are just coming into the channel. Yes, we're moving. We are making this move to start a new endeavor, kind of a new business together, but we're bringing stream along and it's we're moving for the stream pretty much is how I should say it. We are moving for the future of the stream, not permanently though which is why we are not signing a lease anywhere like that, is we don't know how long the truck is gonna take to build and we don't wanna be tied down somewhere if we don't have to be. Oh, 
Why did the words portion size make a look of confusion on my face? I don't know, Torino. <laughs> Get tired and take days off if you just cook a lot. Sammy and Kate must be so sore. I actually, I don't get sore from cooking. It's just like the one thing that keeps me pretty healthy, I would say. But that's the thing, Daff, is my training over the years has like brought me to this point where I can stand for many, many hours without a break. It shouldn't be a thing, though. <laughs> it's nothing to brag about. Let's just say that. Just grabbing a hand towel. He'll nipple at dinner. <laughs> Delete it, Daph says. Okay, so here's my pot. We're going to start cubing this up. I like to have it nice and bite sized. So let's go in half first. And then I think we'll just go in half again. And then chunks like this. Should be nice. I mean, they're going to be nice and tender. So you can easily just split it with your fork after. But I think if we go any smaller than that, they're just going to start falling apart. That's totally me too. You guys are talking about what it's like after you're done cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, I usually need to just like walk out of there, take about 10, 15 minute break, and then I can think about actually eating what I cooked. Hi, Prouder. How long will you be out for the move? So we're making the move next Wednesday. We leave as well as partly Thursday. And then the streams will be back on July 2nd. But yeah, we're rolling this whole week through to Sunday. And then we'll see you on the 2nd. Yeah, exactly, Bonk. It's like part of having your adrenaline going and stuff like that, right? Cooking mode, not eating mode. Thanks, Sam. We even get to pick some fresh dill from the garden today. I'm going to keep doing these one by one just so they stay nice, consistent. You do the same thing. Well, I'm glad it's not just me because sometimes I feel so weird. It's like I should be starving. I just can't even look at the food. <laughs> it's like, don't look at me. Oh, well, happy to say, Prouder, we don't have to do the job hunt at least after moving. So that's a okay. And hi, Scoots. Hope you're doing good. What's for lunch today? Daph says the one problem I cannot fix is tanting so much it ruins my palate. I wish I could just drink a sip of wine and my tongue resets so I know what everything will taste like to guests. <laughs> What's the other word, Daph? Can't eat after you cook and it freaks out the people you're, you serve. Yeah, right? It's like, come on down. Have a seat and eat with us. It's like, I can't, okay? <laughs> Hi, Master of Splits. Welcome. That's exactly it, Torino. Only job we have when we get out there is making contacts with the local farmers to locally source produce and meats and stuff. You got it, dude. How exciting is that even?
tasting. It's okay, we still love you, Daph. Have you had your coffee yet, though? <laughs> Leftover homemade chicken fried rice. Yum, Scooter. Yeah, it's so good to see you. Thanks for popping in. I know your new job is quite busy. And we do miss ya. Okay, there's this. Now all we're gonna do, top this up with some cold water, just enough so that the potatoes are submerged. And we'll add some salt in and we can just put the lid on that on the stove top for now. Actually, I'll leave that there because I'll show you how much water we add. You were in Red Deer last summer, you went to the farmer's market. If you weren't so disabled, you would have stayed all day just looking at everything. So yeah, we're in St. Albert. That's where I grew up, just outside of Edmonton. One of the biggest farmer's markets in Western Canada. Ernest would know, they're just popping in. Boop, Ernest, hope you're doing good. Happy Thursday. And then my mom even had a stall at that market for a bit Torino. She has a loom, so she was doing some loom stuff. I loved it. So much awesome stuff. Hey, there we go. So just enough to cover the potatoes. Perfect. Making surf and turf. Yeah, you were gonna take us to Joe Forte's tonight. <laughs> now you don't have to. Thanks for the follow. TMP hybrid, welcome in. And it's true, Daph. Yeah, when you're tasting it, if you keep tasting it something over and over, your palate kind of gets used to it. That's why I add a bit of seasoning at a time while I'm tasting. So it's like, okay, now it needs a bit of this. Now it needs this. Okay, ready? So for this amount of potatoes, gonna do one, two, three good spoonfuls of salt. We'll add a little bit more later when we mix it with the cream and the dill and the butter. Now we're just gonna put a lid on this. It will stay safe on the stove top while we keep working on the rest of everything. And there's one and a half minutes on the 30 minute timer we set for the tenderloin reverse searing outside. So we're not gonna start anything just yet either. Just gonna give this board a wipe and we'll get prepped for the next thing for the meal. Yeah, it's so funny. The day that we're supposed to be moving, like actually driving, some of the hottest days of the heat wave that's coming here on the Western Canada. <laughs> like a couple days before we leave, some of the spots we drive through are gonna be like 40 degrees Celsius. Like, oh my gosh. And just so you're aware, that's not normal. Not normal. Okay, potatoes cross off. We just need buttercream. I got the, the shallot and the tarragon already ready in the fridge. I'm gonna grab my thermometer and I'm just gonna turn this timer off. Let's head on outside. Check on our tenderloin. Um. Where did all of the egg mitts and everything get stuck? Just here, I think? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the fun that's packing. <laughs> Where is this? Okay, so this is the first half an hour. We probably won't notice much change on it. It's actually looking pretty good. Let's see what the temp is. It's still like quite soft and meaty to the touch. I think we can definitely go longer. 
So internal right now is only at like 59. So we're halfway there, I guess. So maybe in another 30 minutes, we'll be at 120. And this temp right now is 190 Fahrenheit, really low and slow. Instead of going the full half hour, because I think once it gets warm, that piece of meat's going to start to cook quicker and you don't want to overcook it. That would be sad. So I'm going to set another 20 minutes and then we'll see. Come back in. Just going to give this a little wash. And the thing about doing the beef on the Traeger at that temp is it's also getting a little bit of smoke on it. it smells so good. And it's also given some color to the piece of meat. Okay, I'm going to take a really quick bathroom break and we'll keep going here. And thank you, Ernest. Okay, BRB. Okay, so Sammy set the 20 minute timer for us. So we're good to go on watching our meat. And I thought, you know what? Since that is almost done out there, we can turn on the potatoes. So they can get cooked all the way first. And then what happens, you drain the water, add your butter to the pot, add your cream, and it kind of gets saucy and creamy that way with the herbs at the end. So I'm gonna turn on this pot that we just finished with. We'll go medium high heat and then wait for it to come up to a boil and then it should be about 15 20 minutes to cook those through so next up i mean we can get the butter and cream out as well as go pick the dill for the potatoes and then it's just the asparagus and the salmon after that nice easy peasies that. So here's a little bit of chopped tarragon as well as brunoise or really fine diced shallots. I'm gonna add that into there as well. We'll kind of do the shallot and the butter for a little bit with the potato so it fries up. Next one, some butter. Our cream we can take out so it can temp. And I've never made these potatoes for our friend Paul so I can't wait to hear what he thinks of them. Okay, come on over. So is it only Ukrainians then who make these dilly potatoes, Torino? Because <laughs> no one else has done this before, I don't think. Sam never heard of the dill potatoes until I showed them to him. So butter, I'm going to go probably one, two, and three, just for the amount of potatoes we'll have. We'll have a bit extra, I would say. Pop those on a little container and the rest of that can go back inside. And this can go over there. 
Okay, and now I'm just gonna go set up the phone in the garden so you can see how it's just popping right now. You won't be able to see where I'm picking the dill, but I wanna show you how good it looks out here today. Try not to go too far. Okay, you are just on the ground. Quick switch. Oh no. Okay, there we go. I was like, did it cut out for a sec? Okay, so the dill is all the way back here, but whew, it's actually towering up. Good thing we're picking this today. Holy smokey. The dill's popping. Really good amount to pick. And that's the thing is you really want to keep picking your dill as it grows. Otherwise it gets so tall and kind of just falls over. Smells so good. Whenever I use dill, I always get such like great memories and such a good feeling. I know it was a big part of my family's heritage, right? Healthy amount of dill here. Okay, I was hiding, <laughs> but look, we got it. So fresh. Okay, let's head back on in. Yeah, we really lucked out with such a nice day here, Bonk, it's true. Okay, just gonna pop you back in for now and I'm gonna put the camera back for the Traeger. I'm kind of smoky from the Traeger. Smoking. What a view, you like that? <laughs> it's funny, everyone that's been like coming over, taking all our extra stuff that we're getting rid of, as soon as they walk in, they're just like, wow, this garden, unbelievable. And then they have so many questions. Some people have even taken photos and stuff. I love it. Okay, now we can chop up our dill for uh, the potatoes. Get a little container for that. And then that's all crossed off. We might just do a little squirt of lemon at the end for this too, which I'll bring out a nice little half lemon kicking around. That will be good to cut through the richness of the cream and the butter. Balance everything out. Nom. Yeah, they don't want just the stuff. They want the whole house, right? <laughs> Are we professional packers now? I would say a scooter. So hilarious on my Facebooks, you know how they do memories that pop up. So in 2014, on this day, 
I was like, woohoo, we're moving to Vancouver. Seven years later, almost to the day, we're going back the other way now. <laughs> I was like, oh, the adventure, that's life. Okay, so I'm going to wash this dill. Just picked it up and there's so many little aphid buggies inside of it. They love to hide there. So first, we'll wipe up all the buggies so that they don't make their way around. We'll wash that dill. I mean, it is just extra protein, but still. Yeah, you saw it, Bog? It is really funny. It's like, well, that wasn't planned. <laughs> I think that was the day that Sam... that we knew he got the job for us to open the brewery. I think that was the day and we're like, okay, we're moving. Wash up the herbage. That was your test to see if you liked me or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Token Sammy to sneeze. Wouldn't be a stream without it. He is blessed. Okay, let's dry this off before we chop it. Otherwise, it's just going to make a mess. Something like that. Holy! There's still a bunch of buggers in there. Bunch of buggers. What a bunch of buggers. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of that towel. Goodbye. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, just start picking off of the tough bottom part of the stem. And then as we're doing this, I'm also just kind of listening for the potato pot behind me to come up to a boil. Yeah, exactly. Those aphids, just extra protein bonk. There's like nothing to them. Dunzo. Now we do a little chop chop. Almost ready back there. These potatoes are good with a lot of things. I will say that it's good with the salmon today. It's good with the beef. I've had it with pork before. Definitely good with chicken as well or any poultry. Just an all around good side dish. And quite simple to make. I mean, the cream might destroy me later, but it's worth it. <laughs> Hello, Scarman. This is the first stream of yours I've seen. Well, welcome in. Welcome in, Scarman. What's going on? Right now, we're just chopping up some fresh dill to go into our Ukrainian creamy dill potatoes. Our one side dish for our meal today. We also have the potatoes coming up to a boil in a pot, as well as we're slow roasting our piece of beef tenderloin. So we have like three things going on currently. Sure. What's, shouldn't be anything different. Or is this your... Oh, I cut that right. Okay, just give me a sec. Sam needs help with something right now. Might be that. That?
I don't know what happened. No, it's, you normally sign your own. Yeah, but I don't know why it's not working. How do I have everything set up? Do I have a picture of the setup? If you tune on on Sunday or tune in on Sunday, you will see the complete teardown of our kitchen studio that we have set up right now. So we're going to be having everyone for stream on the mobile phone. And you'll see the behind the scenes of what goes on. So we already took down the stove cam because we're starting to fill all the holes in the walls because we're just renting here. But right now I have one Sony camera here, one here right above the cutting board, and then two key lights is like my mainstream setup. Yeah, there's the other camera that was above the stove top. Okay, done chopping our dill. So just to keep that fresh from drying out, because it's hot here, I'm just gonna pop a little lid on there. Yeah, Scarman, so we have all of our recipes typically linked if you do exclamation mark recipe for what we're cooking for the day. And then if you do exclamation mark menu, it will tell you what we're cooking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I thought that would be a really fun way to kind of finish off cooking in this kitchen together is to show... I mean, most people saw us rebuild and put in all the new cabinets and stuff. So it'll be fun to take it down together too. You really want to like dill, but you just can't. Keep going back to it, but you never like dill, not even as a kid. Not dill pickles, no nothing. That's crazy, Prouder. I actually never really met anyone that like really, really disliked it in that way. It almost seems like weird. And yeah, the fact that you're like sad because so many good things have dill in it. <laughs> but they're trying to reno that's the thing that's the thing and yeah welcome in tmp hybrid happy to have you part of the community happy you found us today okay sammy has the beef timer on his watch so i don't know if we're there yet keep crossing through the list though all of our potato stuff is done i'm gonna take the salmon out and we're gonna season it up your timer didn't go off yet for the beef. Three minutes, and 40 seconds. Three minutes, 40 seconds. Just enough time for us to take the salmon out of the package. Pardon? Oh, gimbal is being blarred today. <laughs> yeah, two things I look for in new friends. If they like dill, as well as garlic. <laughs> Torino. Dill is good in stews. Yeah, that's what Torino said. Yeah, judge me with compassion and mercy, please. <laughs> we don't actually judge people here on what they eat. We're joking. We still love you. Thanks for the lurk, Mary. Okay, come on in. So this was caught by name of the fisherman, Zach. <laughs> How local is that? So our friend Zach, as well as his dad Paul and his grandpa Dave, they've been fishing these waters together here around Vancouver Island for a combined over a hundred years together. So they really know what they're doing. I am so grateful and thankful that they did take me out for a fishing trip. Like I said, a few years back before the pandemic and now since the pandemic is they can't really take us because we're not family so if the dfo stops the boat they get just completely shut down if there's someone that's not family on the boat with them just because of covid it's so silly but yeah those are the beautiful pieces of salmon so this was frozen so it's a little bit like kind of misshapen almost and then this piece looks like a little bit bigger than this one, but they're both quite thick, right? Like that's over an inch thick. So I would say for that piece, about seven to eight minutes it'll take to cook. And I did go to culinary school. Yep, I graduated in 2012 from culinary school. This was their last fishing trip. Yeah, so they just went up last weekend up island and they caught three massive halibuts together. 
and then they brought over about half of that halibut fish and we made it into fish cakes for them just a really easy freezer meal take out the fish cake it's all cooked just a simple reheat pan fry they love it yeah can't get much more fresh caught than that exactly exactly okay i'm not gonna season this just yet but they are gonna start to temp up so come more close to room temperature and what that does is because the middle part of the fish takes the longest to cook it makes the outside of the fish cook more evenly that way so you shouldn't have like a dry exterior at all you need to have the same sanitary procedures for raw fish as other raw meat. Yep. Yep. They're very similar that way. I mean, maybe the only time that would be different is if you're like doing sushi type of fish, which I don't have any experience with. Okay. We're going to pop these to the back. Potatoes look like they're just about to come up if we take a, oh yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no stove camera. Take a quick peek on my own. <laughs> Why are you raising your hand? Countdown. The meat is ready. The countdown, the meat is ready? Okay, thank you. Okay, you gotta watch the potatoes then if I'm going out because they're probably gonna start boiling. Hey. Hi, Annie. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. And happy another week of freedom. Oh, baby. <laughs> Just had a bank check drawn for $30,000. Reality is setting in. <laughs> Hi, caffeinated. You'll be in and out today. No problem. Just happy to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, we're going out. Let's go check the meats. Got my oven mitt as well as my thermometer. We're looking for 120 degrees Fahrenheit internal. Go in the nice, like the thickest part, right in the center. We're only at 77. So it's coming up a little bit slower than anticipated, but that's fine. That's really good. So I'm going to set another 20 minutes. And then we'll check it again. Should be very close to 120 Fahrenheit at that point. Come on in. We bought a furniture blanket for the table, some more boxes and packing material, also a hand truck with deflated tires. No, <laughs> no, Annie. <laughs> okay, 20 minutes. And you don't even have the tire pump. What are you gonna do? Gotta like take it to a little gas station to pump up the tires. Thanks, Garmin. You have to go buy a pump. Yeah, I guess that's fair too. It could come in handy later on, right? Yes, Garmin, we've been streaming for three and a half years cooking on Twitch. So we really feel like we doctored in all the angles and the quality of everything. It's really fun. We are here to teach you the whole way. Okay, salmon. What we need to do next for the salmon is we're actually gonna be cooking it over here is I have a seasoned cast iron pan in the oven. This is what I'm going to be using today to cook the salmon nice and shiny. These potatoes are really going now. I'll keep my eye on there as well. Just turn that pot down a touch. And I think for the salmon... Oh, actually, I know what I'm going to do. Garlic chicken fat. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Wait a tick. There's something missing here. I ate schnitzel yesterday with garlic chicken fat, and oh my god, I want another schnitzel. So we had this in the freezer thanks to Bonk from yeah. our 40 clove, probably closer to 50 clove chicken. <laughs> so I strained all of the fat, so garlic chicken fat. 
Yeah, we are gonna sear the salmon in that. Why? Because we can. But you could go with any sort of vegetable oil. Wouldn't want to go with olive oil at first because it has a lower smoke point, so it's not great for searing. It'll give you a bit of a burnt or bitter sort of taste. Yeah, thanks, Bonk. Exactly. That, that might be one of the first dishes we cook there. 40 clove chicken. 40 clove chicken, Sammy says we need that in our life when we go to Edmonton. That'd be a fun one. All on the Traeger. Scoots. Had some friends that had their stuff transported in a moving semi and it rolled. It's, they said like 90% of this stuff is nowhere to be found and what was left they just dumped out in a storage unit for them to go through. Wow. Yeah, we're doing it all ourselves. Yep. But I mean, I did it first. When we first came out here, I hired a moving company to bring everything out. But they actually took really great care of everything. Okay, sounds good, hippie. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, that should be the dish you make at every new house. The 40 clove chicken. It's like you, you cleanse the juju that way with all the garlic. It's perfect. Yeah, you make it too, Annie. <laughs> okay, let's check on our potatoes that are... Oh my God, I really want to check on the potatoes with you guys. <laughs> that are boiling here. It's different. I just want my camera. Looking very starchy though. So we just want these to be cooked through. We don't want them to fall apart. So this is getting close. <laughs> Ban me, Mish. Ban me. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. You'll be in the shadows. Well, we'll be thinking of you, Lauren. You stay safe over there. Forty clove chicken is a must, not hard to do, and the most tender chicken, seriously, you'll ever have. I've not had anything better than that before, which is crazy to say, because we've cooked a lot of chicken. Dust, yeah, you would move yourself, but since it's cross country, you, you should hire the movers. Like I said, is that's kind of a one-off story that Scooter shared. Most of the time, they take really great care of your stuff. And you don't want the hassle of going that far, it's true. Okay, I'm gonna turn these off. Get out my little colander and we're gonna strain the potatoes in the sink. Like I said, is I don't want them to start falling apart and they're almost, almost at that point. It's okay if it falls apart a little bit because it makes a nice kind of starchy sauce. It does look nicer though if they can keep their form. Okay, so now we're just going to leave the pot empty. Let those potatoes just keep draining and almost like cooling off. And then when the beef comes off, we can start in the potato pot the butter and the shallots together. Then we add the potatoes back in with the cream and then the dill and the tarragon. <laughs> Torino! <laughs> Next time I move will be from my bedroom to my grave. Be a nice change of scenery. <laughs> Yeah, Creep, kind of wish they just dumped half of my stuff on the side of the road the last time I moved. <laughs> Probably would have done me a favor. Hilarious. Yeah, tarragon, fancy schmancy. Why did I get that? I got it for... Oh yeah, I got it for the king crab bisque last week, Torino, and then we had extras. I used a little bit in the fish cakes for the boys. But yeah, today with the potatoes and the beef, it'll taste really yummy. Okay, next one, we'll get into our asparagus. Get all that prepped and ready. Those will be going onto a tray to roast. So I'll get a sheet pan out. And I don't think I'm gonna line the pan. I think we'll get a nice browning effect and roasting effect if we just put the asparagus right on the tray. 
I'm gonna use like the corrugated pen as well. Should be no sticking. Okay, sounds good, Scooter. Thanks for the awesome chat. We miss ya. Okay. So I just put green vegetable on the list for Sam. This is what we get. Some tasty looking asparagus. A couple of the tops are a bit maybe damaged a touch. We'll take care of those together though. So undo this. This might be two pans of asparagus. I guess we'll see. It's nice to see though that these are actually grown in Canada. Typically we get asparagus from like Mexico or California. And then the other thing I'm really appreciating right now on those is the nice thin spears. Yeah, asparagus. So like typically we want them around pinky sort of thickness is they're nice and tender that way. Okay, one thing that asparagus doesn't like is being really, really wet all the time is it'll literally just go to mush like this. So what I usually do if that happens is just kind of pick it off and discard it. Some of these we can just rinse off and it'll be okay. But if it's really, really mushed up like that, just kind of get rid of it because it tastes funny. Looks like there was only a couple like that. So not bad at all. I think first what we're going to do is just get rid of the bottom part of the stem that we don't need. And then I'll give all of these a nice little rinse. And then we'll lay it out on the pan and dress it up. Oh yeah, that's a crazy story, Daph. Wife and you moved across four states, but for two years you were separated by jobs, three hour drive. When you finally got back in the same house, you had like four of everything. I believe it, hey? Okay, so take a handful. <laughs> Thanks, Annie. <laughs> take a handful of the asparagus, line up the bottoms, and we're gonna come up like two inches, let's say. Keep it all together and just go straight down. And that should get rid of the really woody sort of dry bottom part of the asparagus. I'm not gonna bung up my compost with that. Just pop it in a container. Hi Cheese, how are you? Friend, <coughs> ooh, sorry about that. Torino. I don't know what happened when you choke on your saliva, I guess. <laughs> Torino has a friend that has a sister up in Lynn Lake in northern Manitoba. He was saying she hasn't had fresh asparagus or Brussels sprouts in months because of the prices. That's the thing, right? But that also shows like if it costs that much to bring that item there is maybe it shouldn't be a thing if no one's buying it anyways. That shows that not everything in the world has to be accessible at all times. I didn't do the snap test, no. Welcome to chef life, Bonk. Chefs don't do the snap test. We just line it up and cut because nobody's got time for that. Time is money in restaurant kitchens. So it's all about being as efficient as possible. And then typically what happens like after these bottoms are all trimmed off, this would be repurposed into like a cream of asparagus potato soup or something like that, right? So we may be cutting off a little bit more without doing the snap test, but nothing is gonna be wasted. So that's where that gets made up for. Okay, that made a nice little mess of my board. I think I'm just gonna rinse and then bring it back over here. Let me just wipe up these kind of slimy bits. The asparagus slime. Oh, Annie, so Sam and I, we have a friend that has started a hydroponic business. And he's actually killing it. He started with microgreens and now he just distributes them to like restaurants and stuff like that. He's doing really good. And he says like all of the stuff to buy to set it up is so inexpensive. 
what is this snap test? So yeah, like Annie said, if, if I didn't cut this off, we would take this spear and I would take the end part and then somewhere up here and we would just snap it. And then this is typically where it would snap. This is the woody part that we don't want to be eating in this same way. And then this is all the usable part. And then that kind of gives you an idea of where to cut all of the other ones as well. Okay, let's run these just under cold water. Hi, Presto. Won't be around long heading to a work happy hour event. Our second in almost a year and a half. Ooh, have fun. Have fun. Be safe. And I hope there's tasty foods for you. And thank you as well for stopping by. I love that. Those are all cleaned. You're definitively Ubering it down and back. Yes. Probably just get in tater tots. Hey, Sammy got tater tots for us this week too. Great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, my notebook right against the board, Annie. <laughs> very OCD. It's just like it's nice little safe place there. I find if I don't put it there, I just put it somewhere silly and lose it somehow. Yeah, this this cooking stream is very educationally focused. So that's why I keep saying ask questions. There's no silly questions. We're all learning together. Thanks for the follow, Brendan. Welcome. Okay, now I'm going to wipe up this little bit of asparagus slime. Do you want these cut in half, Sam, or just left whole for roasting? Okay. Got some oven cleaner, Annie. I wish the previous tenant had done that before you moved in. What? They never cleaned the oven for you? Tisk tisk. What a tenant thing to do though. <laughs> also, thanks for the reminder as well. Okay, so how wet is this? I'm probably just gonna grab a cloth here. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to get really hot this weekend. It's like, we don't really wanna be cleaning the oven. Grab a nice clean towel and then we'll just give this a pat as well. As if this stays too wet, the oil is not gonna stick. And neither will the salt and pepper. That looks good. Now, right over to the sheet pan, start laying it out. I think we should be able to fit all this on the one pan. Might be a bit piled up, but we can give it a shake kind of halfway through. Get rid of that. And this is what we got. Beautiful. Hello, Yawn Lions. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, even when the oven comes with a included cleaning cycle, old school moms just still scrub the heck out of it. She was getting her frustrations out, Torino. Leave her be. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pretty well, yeah. All is well here. All is well. Okay, now. A bit of extra virgin olive oil. We'll start with that. Just a nice drizzle and then we'll kind of get it distributed around. And then from there, we can do our salt and pepper to season. And oil is really important when you're roasting, especially vegetables. It helps them from drying out, as well as the oil helps to brown them up as well. Oh, these pans. Yeah, we don't have a link for these pans, Torino, but everyone really loves them, it's true. So these are Nordic ware, but we picked these up at Costco. And holy heck, Annie! <laughs> Gifting five subs to the channel. I love how loud it is on my speakers, too. We got Night Wander coming in. Kaylee the Gamer, who's been with us since this morning. So welcome, Kaylee. Wash Skade, Fahad Ferrey, as well as Steezlo. Welcome to the crew, friends. And thank you so much, Annie, for helping to build up our community, our kitchen crew. Yahoo! Yeah, Nordic Wear to Reno. Might be able to find a associate link to share with everyone on stream. I should check it out. Cause yeah, they work so great. Okay, so now we're just tossing these to coat completely with the oil. What is the best oven cleaner? A natural cleaner? Oh, I'm not really familiar with a natural oven cleaner. Usually restaurants use like the strongest stuff possible. <laughs> that you probably shouldn't breathe in. So that little grouping is good. Looky Luso, thank you very much as well for the 15 months in a row. Over that one year mark, we're laughing. Yeah, did I just see Annie say easy off? That's the one. Oh yeah. So we used to always like fully clean the kitchen on Sundays after our brunch service together. And we use the easy off to like clean the ovens and all the hood vents and stuff that catch the grease. And so we're cleaning and then we get in shit because the fumes are going out into the dining room. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> didn't realize that. Thank you, Looky Lucille, as well, for the thousand bits. Just rolling in with a resub and biddies for the food truck fund. Thank you for the generosity. We really appreciate that. It was kind of an open kitchen, though, Annie. Is like they didn't have any swinging doors or anything like that. Okay, that's the timer for our meats. So we're gonna quickly go out and check that one more time. Should hopefully be close to the 120 Fahrenheit mark. I'm guessing so. Is Sam gifting subs on my behalf again? I can't on a light anymore. So oh yeah, here. that's right. Thank you, Sammy. Gifting the sub to Kermit Morph. Welcome in Kermit. Okay, gonna switch up this. Nothing happened on my side. Oh, there it is. Stream. Why are you lagging? Do I respond to DMs on Insta? I do. As well as Discord, Facebook, all of the above. Yeah, the sun's probably making the camera so hot. Okay, this is looking like it's getting real happy now. Yeah, for sure. I think we're like pretty much there. There's a bit of meat juices coming out too. So I'm gonna go in this way, right to the center. Yeah, we're getting close, 91. I think I'm gonna turn it up to 200 now, just to finish it off. Do 10 degrees hotter. Or 210, Sammy says. 
so 20 degrees hotter and then we maybe need 10 minutes on that really okay just gonna quickly switch this and then we'll bring the camera in so it doesn't keep roasting out there oh show them the mess leave it the way it is the mess the mess Oh, you're going to bring it in. The terrifying mess. Okay, so what did I say? 10 minutes? Bam. Holy. Thank you for posting those, Torino. Looks so different. <laughs> Hello. Hello over there. Hi. <laughs> and yeah, for everyone that's wanting to see the mess that is the studio. There it is. Welcome. <laughs> Here is the one side. Hello. Hello, friends. We're streaming. It's a stream and a stream. Gonna be a lot to pack up, but that's really it, Annie. That's all of our boxes. There's no boxes in any other room, so not too bad. Okay, you're doing this. We'll come back over here then. You thought yours was bad, Cheese? For the setup you're saying, like the wires and stuff? <laughs> There's way more stuff going on. We were like... I mean, we could clean all that up and make it look super nice, but we're leaving soon anyways, so it's not even worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, all the new peeps for sure like the behind the scenes. Okay, I'm gonna grab our salt and just some pepper here. I think I gotta fill the grinder. Oh, it is full, yes. We'll season up our asparagus. And then that's ready for roasting. I would say same amount of time that the fish takes to cook, the asparagus will take the same amount of time in the oven. Packed up all your spices, Annie. Still have to do dishes and some pots and pans. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that like Saturday and Sunday together on stream. Hybrid, you want to do something like this because you changed careers to culinary and you're so excited to hopefully pick my brain. Oh, sweet. I'm excited too then. Yeah, combine myself and Sam, my husband, also known as Omdog in chat, if you see him. We have, I think now, like close to 30 years experience together. That's quite a bit in the hospitality industry. Most people don't make it that far. Why? Because it's hard. It's hard work. And you really have to love the food, I think. See, Suzati, thank you for the follow. Hi, Thrash. Oh, thank you so much. What's for lunch today? I love asking everyone that pops in on their lunch break. Wait, what's for lunch? What do we got going on? Okay, so that's it. And then when this is done roasting, just a final little finish because we can, is we'll pop a few rounds of this chimichurri compound butter on there. And that'll melt in and be just absolutely delish. Hi, Nike. How are you doing, dude? You finally got an upgrade on the wheels? Nice. Yeah. What'd you get? Yeah. Yeah, if you need a good pizza recipe, ask Cheese. If you need a good curry recipe, ask Taz. Totally. If you need canning expertise, ask, ask Kanara. Kanara. <laughs> if you need sushi expertise, ask LA. And if you need coffee expertise, ask Claire. If you need breakfast, <laughs> advice the josh elkin yeah yeah and hi ice good to see you too it's if been you, a bit if you want to have a great weed stream go to b bubs yeah <laughs> yeah nike <laughs> if you need a good stream suggestion just ask me <laughs> that sounds good thrash i am i love sandwiches so much 
So yeah, turkey Havarti tomato sandwich with garlic mayo and lettuce sounds so good. With a cold brew even? I would love to share that lunch with you. Yeah, now you're talking just naughty. We made the chimichurri butter, la was it last Sunday? Uh, yeah. Last Sunday on stream, my husband, Omdog, did a cook with Sammy for one of our viewers and he made this. Or the weekend before. We can't keep track anymore. So all it is, is butter that is mixed with parsley, cilantro, lemon, chili peppers, a little bit of red wine vinegar, and just salt and pepper to season. So I'm gonna do, I think, five of these rounds for this. And this I always keep either in the fridge or freezer until I wanna use it, and then, I'll cut the rounds and kind of let them temp and warm up. Otherwise, I find if they're really cold out of the fridge or freezer, they just don't melt very nicely. It's like an uneven sort of melting. And yeah, there's a great recipe that I linked in our Discord. I don't really care if it falls apart either. I'm not doing it for a show today. But the other thing that we did, so last time we used this, is we also cut it to go on top of a tri-tip after it was grilled. That was so good. Is there a YouTube? Yeah, the VOD is already posted on our YouTube for you to watch from that one. So it's a grilled tri-tip, I believe with smashed potatoes, and I forget the veggie. Oh, roasted tomato. Pop this away as well while we wait. Twenty twenty one Kia Rio, sweet. Fully loaded with almost the same payment monthly, but ten bucks cheaper. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, dude, congratulations. Hope you and the waifu Serena, are find very happy. My Santoku Shun. You got your first set of shun knives. Always exciting. There's quite a few people actually in our community that have shun knives. He wants to go one Proud of them. Is that what you, Trina said? Oh, limit is 125. Looking at getting a new knife every month for the six months. Your limit is 125 total, Torino, or per month? Yeah, Daph got the chef's knife. Want to get the Santoku next? Yeah, that's so awesome hybrid. You use your whetstone to sharpen them even. Just like butter. Okay, so this, just temp up, set aside. There's two minutes until we check on our beef again. If it's at temp, we are then going to doctor up the Traeger. It's going to go up to 425 Fahrenheit. And then while that's heating up outside the oven, we'll start searing off our salmon and finishing the potatoes. Like this is $199. If you're gonna buy a, a bunch of knives, put your knife into your workhorse or your money into your workhorse first. Hey JL Presto. This is the knife you should buy. Yeah. Honestly, I've had mine for 13 years now the greatest knife I own, buy it. It'll, it'll, it'll last you forever. Well, yeah, because I was going to say, like, this is my most expensive knife, is the chef's knife that I always use. And then my other supplementary knives for, like, butchery and other finicky things, they're much, much cheaper because you're not using them all the time. I'm sure I can, I'm sure I can find it for cheaper somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, you really have to just search for the sales, right? Is That's the thing is never buy a knife full price if you can wait. Post it in general. Sammy, post it in Discord. And that's right as well, Bonk. Seems expensive, but it'll outlast you. And then shuns also, they hold their value. So if you ever have to get rid of it, you can sell it for a pretty good price. 
Yeah, me too, Presto. I got Victorinox. They're all packed up right now, but that's basically all of my other supplementary knives are Victorinox. And I love them. I have no bad things to say. I got those for culinary school and I've used them ever since. Good afternoon, Mom. Like a lot of people that get their knife kit from culinary school end up totally switching from what they originally got. But I'm so happy with what I got. <laughs> I don't have anything that I've started with. Yeah, so example from Sam, like he doesn't have any of his original kit that he used in culinary school. I sold my globals when I got the shuns. Hi, green box box. That's Sammy's mom. Hope you're having a great day. Okay, that's how 10 minutes goes by. Let's go check the meats. I'm not gonna check or bring it out then. I'm just gonna bring the thermometer and then we're gonna be starting here anyways, so. <laughs> yeah, butter knives and a Victorinox. Start your associates in culinary arts as at a community college in August. Sweet. Yeah, Annie. So last bit of stuff packing up will happen Sunday on stream. All the studio. This is looking good. Oh, smoke got me a bit. Can't see. Still a bit more, We're only at 96. Come on. It's only at 96. Sammy, it's taking forever. Reverse steering. Chat. It's only one o'clock. Chat, please. Do you have a couple mini fingers if you want to open them? Oh, that could be fun. That could be fun. The trigger sounds amazing. You love it. Kiss them on the grill. The salmon will do a nice little start in the pan and then they'll finish in the grill or in the oven. Oh, nice. You got your second vaccination. Well, hopefully it doesn't take you down too much. Here, this will be fun as well. Since we're just chilling today to show how everything got packed up. So this is my little knife kit. Kate hairs all over it. It's not the greatest. You can see it's uh, seen some stuff, right? <laughs> and there's something sneaky back here. What is this? Oh, never forget the Sharpie. Okay, it's always fun to sometimes look back. Pulled pork slider, spinach salad, lettuce wraps, pierogi pizza. I don't know where that came from, but welcome into Kate's mind. Oh, a nice Nike. Got your second dose as well. Should we do this on the cutting board? Ready? So that's how it opens up. Oh, bit of risky business here. This flips up. Mine's actually not that full. I can stick the fillet knife in there now. And this is what we got. So this little side's all for little trinkets. Got my Victorinox boning knife, Victorinox serrated, a Henkel's hand-me-down little cleaver that I like to use. From my grandparents. This is my first ever chef's knife is a Henkel's. I hate it, by the way. I should probably just sell it. It is good for like heavy duty things though when I don't have to care as much for the blade, I guess. This is like a long sort of slicing knife that we got one time with Serrano ham. I just kept it because it's great. This is my Victorinox a scimitar for butchery. And then this is one other like quite expensive Japanese knife blade. You can see it's a bit rusted. I need to give it some love. And that was bought from Knifeware. That's it though. So now this, this is our like fish fillet knife. It's a Bubba blade. It comes with this amazing sheath. 
I don't know if I can stick this anywhere. I might just stick it on the side here. Like that. And that'll be good. Yeah, I don't like hankles. Is something with... I don't like the width of the heel of the blade, Daph. It really just splits stuff. It doesn't cut clean. And then also the handle is super uncomfortable for me. You have the zest peeler. <laughs> Sounds good, Scarman. We'll be back tomorrow. We cook Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm not going to say Sunday because there's no cooking Sunday this week on Twitch. But yeah, we start at 11 a.m. Pacific every day. You bought a wust off after owning Henkels? Right. You want to do Sammy's too? We can. And hi, Chuck. Hi, hi, Chuck. That's Sam's dad. Okay, this knife kit is a bit more like really heavy duty this is sam's he's had it for a long time i want to show this too sammy it's legit sammy the chef we helped open this brewery together in vancouver when do you want to have the food truck buy hybrid we think it's going to take about six months to build it out. And probably a few more after that to get it like fully mobile and operational. We're really giving ourselves all the time that we could possibly need, though. We're not rushing on anything. Your only Henkels is a paring knife because the rest felt weird. Yeah, see? It's not just me. Okay, next one. So this is a full shun knife set. You... This was gifted to you, though? Yes. From one of your restaurants that you worked at. Yes. Was it like a staff party thing? Uh, I got employee of the year. Sammy got employee of the year at one of the restaurants you worked at, and this is what they got. No, no. Yeah, a trip for two anywhere in the world. I chose to have the house instead. Actually? Actually? Instead of a trip anywhere around the world, he chose this knife set instead, but I think this is probably a better choice because this lasts you, a lifetime yeah, they let you uh pick something for your trait ah I, I did this. so you're looking at the bottom side here this is just keeps everything in order and that's how the shun set is so super super organized and he's got all of them yeah chef salmon like this one is terrifying that's a massive knife. It doesn't even fit all on the seam. Beautiful though. But that's the thing is most of these you don't really use on a daily basis. So you don't need to spend the really expensive money on all knives, just on the couple that you use all the time. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, Sammy says he can't do sushi. That's just what he wants us to think, Daph. That's what he wants us to think. Yeah, barbecue slicing knife, right? That's for brisket, Creep says. The brisket knife. And they are shun. Yeah, they are shun. So, so nice. A trip for two when I had nobody, shuns are better. <laughs> yeah, Sam says, I had the choice to take a trip for two anywhere. It was only him. So he chose the knives. They've stayed with him the whole time. Yep. <laughs> the knives never left him. Oh, and then he so found a cape. Right now, Presto's sitting on the sidelines and looking for a good type of pan set. Do you guys recommend anything where chemicals wouldn't leach into your food? No, I... Definitely not nonstick. I mean, we cook with cast iron a ton. And then my only other kind of like supplementary pan set is just a stainless steel. It's not even an expensive set. Ceramic Nike says that's a nice one too. I still always use the steel. Any. Always. Oh yeah. Yeah. We always still, this is a uh, maintenance for your blade, Annie. This Kate, steel. Caitlin likes the diamond steel. I like the round steel. Yes, totally. Speaking of knife sharpening, I still have the Jima. Yeah, yeah, my grandma. She says, 
Sam, you got time to sharpen a few knives before you guys go to set me up real good? My grandma cooks so much still. <laughs> She's hilarious. For sure, cheese. For sure. Perhaps one day you could give some pointers on a Discord call. Never be afraid to approach us for that. Yeah, yay for grandma. Exactly. Okay. Oh. Does it seem like that was about 10 more minutes from the last time I checked the meat? If you're free this weekend, cheese, give me a message. And I'll sharpen knives at the same time with you. Yeah, yeah. Sammy's going to sharpen this weekend, cheese. So if there's a day that works for you, let us know. And then we can Discord call together. Yeah. And I'll just do it in our chat. And then anybody can watch the video. Come in. Yeah. Okay, I was just popping that compound butter away. That should work. Grandma's gonna be a ninja. Oh, oh, she knows like all of the blades. She's like, I'm gonna give you my scimitar. She calls her chef knife a sabatier because she's that's the French side of the family. So she's just like pulling out all these knives. She's like, yeah, this one's good. And, oh, this one you can take. She was funny though, because she's like, I'm like, are the knives dull already? She's like, no. I just want some <laughs> razor sharp before you leave. I was like, uh, oh, that's perfect. Just a maintenance. That's our Jima. Smart though. She's, She's smart. a hoot. She's a hoot. Okay. I'm just gonna go check one more time. The salmon is like perfectly tempt. So hopefully this meat is a-okay. This is what we can potentially do. The smoke almost just got me as well. Is we can take this off and let it rest and it just goes a bit longer in the in the oven to sear up with the salmon like it's at a hundred do we want to rest now and then roast no just keep on going well, i just have to get the temperature up in here though to finish everything is what i'm trying to yeah, time so let it go and i'll watch it as you're raising the temperature and pull it out when it's ready okay so we got kind of yeah. Okay. That's what we're doing right now. So we're going to start getting the grill heating up to 425 for the asparagus and the salmon. I'm going to turn on our salmon pan there. Bring you over. Oh, we don't have the stove top, but we do have outdoor cam. It looks really great. Yeah. I go in one. Perfect. Now we have both of our things that we need. So this is medium high heat. We have our garlic chicken fat. Just gonna do a nice bit of that down in there. Friends, what's your opinion on this camera angle compared to the top view that we typically have? Yeah. So that's heating up and then in the pot here, we'll also start sticking our butter. This angle is so hot right now. It's hot. Everyone's loving it. And yeah, maybe it won't get fogged up. Exactly. Okay, so now this is also fun. Dude, we're going to season the salmon. So nothing on this at all yet. I'm just going really nice and simple salt and pepper. And it's going to soak up some of the garlic flavor from the chicken fat that it sears in. So because the fillets are quite thick, we need a nice coating of salt. You can always add more later though. We can't take it away, so don't go crazy with it. A bit more just in the center there. What did I miss? Presto! Thank you for the two months subscribing at... Can we also say tier three? A tier three sub two months in a row. Won't ever be able to afford a tier three sub again, but you guys are moving and I want to help out a little more than usual. Hope it helps with the moves. Thank you so, so much, Presto, for that. We really appreciate it. Oh, Sammy's on mobile. 
Don't mind this one. <laughs> My computer's all packed up. Yeah, Sammy's computer is all packed up. It's true. He's got nothing. I'll drain too. Pepper it up. Holy, this chicken fat already is smelling so good. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> Turn that hood vent on. Welcome to cook what? Kate. <laughs> Mish. Okay, just waiting. What was Annie saying about my salt crock? Oh, the little salt dish. You know what that's actually for is for butter. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of salt. So that's one thing that is really difficult to teach people is how much salt things actually take so that they are properly seasoned. As most people, I would say, have a very light hand with salt. And well, your body needs salt to survive. So don't be scared of it. I mean, you'll only really get a high salt intake from mostly if you eat processed food. If you're cooking for yourself, you're not going to overdo it on salt. Yeah, the oil's popping. I'm kind of staying back until I'm ready, ready. Yeah, it's pressed ooh. It's pressed ooh, Sammy, not presto. Now we know. Thanks, presto. Yeah, all of the hidden sodium, totally. Okay, this is now smoking. So now I'm gonna turn it down to like a medium low heat. Take the biggest piece of salmon and we're gonna go this side down to start. Should sizzle as soon as you drop it in. And then we're not gonna move it for a bit. So also give it a press so we get a nice even sear on that presentation side. Pardon? Oh, cute. Same with this other piece. And so you can start to see the line where the fish is already cooking, where it's touching the pan. So that also gives us an indication of how it's Steering. And I would say the size of those pieces are close to like seven, eight ounces. Nice, Sam. Nice photo. Okay, so we're just building up the flavor right now, letting that sear and caramelize. And then here is our fishula. A special fish spatula. It's really, really thin. Made specifically for cooking fish. Oh no, yeah, Presto. You're starting to arrange the Uber to the bar, but you don't want to go. <laughs> Ice, it is 100% better to cook your fish with the skin on. Just, I don't know why. This is my last pack of salmon in the freezer. It uh, it was skinless already. I don't know what else more to say. Okay, let me just check. We can keep it going. Yeah, your fish will always turn out much more moist and it'll cook evenly with the skin on. And then if you don't like to eat it, it's just as simple as picking it off afterwards. Here, we can also do this view. Yahoo! That works so good, too. Yeah, as big as your face. Tilapia. <laughs> Tilapia would be a good one for the fishy looks. It's quite delicate, right? Mix of olive oil and butter. That's a good mix, Bonk. Okay, I'm getting ready for a flip. We'll start with this one that we put in the pan first. 
Should be zero stickage. Success. So now I usually... Oh no! That's the saddest day ever. That's what we don't want to happen. I was like, I'm going to be very delicate as I place this down. So there's just a little bit of browning color there on the top side. Loosen this side up too. See how it just is sticking there on this side. There we go. And now those... Turn the heat off. Those are going to go outside right into the grill. No, we don't have anything like that yet. Time okay because we have not even physically seen or touched the truck. The entire sale was done during COVID. So it was all virtual test drive and all of that fun stuff. So we're literally in the same boat as all of our viewers. This is new. Okay, so the handle's hot, which is why I put the glove on. BRB, I'm also taking out the asparagus to roast. And so I say for finishing this, about seven, eight minutes at 425 Fahrenheit. gonna switch out the drip pan. The meat can drip into the asparagus. Should I do it this way probably? Oh perfect Sam. And now it's potato time. I think I'll just move my pots over here because this works great for cooking. Maybe go, what, a little bit higher? A little bit higher now. Yeah, I'm gonna go there. Feels safe. That's as close as we get today. Okay, medium or just past medium heat on that. Let's get rid of this dirty salmon plate for now. And what we're first gonna start with is just sauteing these shallots in a little bit of the butter. I just had this extra in the fridge. You don't need it, but of course it would be nice to have. So they're all really finely diced. So I'll just get some heat on there so it's not strong onion flavor. The new setup is so weird. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> so as soon as the butter is nice and hot and bubbling, we'll get the shallots in. And then to that, we can add the potatoes, the cream, and the herbs. Sounds good, Presto. Hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you very much for that tier three resub as well. Okay, ready? Nice little sizzle when we drop those in. My potatoes ready right here. Oh, there's the shallots. I'm using stuff up, Sama. More chicken fat? Or did you already? Well, we can pour it from the pan if we want. But I got compound butter going on the oh, asparagus. Okay. Sammy's like, fatten it up. <laughs> yeah, you guys get to see like more behind the scenes. You're noticing all the details. Mish loves my little spoons. All of those little spoons I actually picked up. I think I was in Liverpool. 
where I picked those up. That was my one thing to take back from the UK. Still kicking it. You're going to tweak a bunch of the lasagna in an instant pot recipe and method little kitchen project for today. Nice. I hope it goes well. Are they baby spoons? No. They were from like a little sort of like crafty store. I don't know what else to call it. They just had like little bits and bobs of stuff everywhere. Okay, I am going to now add the cream into this. I don't want to brown the shallots really. Just wanted to get a touch of heat on them. So that's how that's going to look. I'm just committing to all of the cream. And then we're going to dump the potatoes in and then the potatoes are going to start to soak up all of that goodness. So just careful as we dump this, we don't splash too much. There we go. Now we're safe to pour. Hello, Mythical Suki. How are you doing? Oh, man, Annie. The pounding music started downstairs. Here we go. Now we're going to give this a stir. Being like somewhat gentle, I would say. You can see how the outside of the potato is like quite mushed. It gets so good, though. That's what allows the cream to start absorbing in. And then the starch mixes with the cream and like makes it pretty saucy. Let those go together for a bit. And then I'll add the dill just so that we preserve the nice fresh green herb. What kind of taters did we use? They were Yukon Golds. They were quite large, so we cut them up into smaller pieces, but tried to keep the skin on for the most part. There we go. Oh, it was better the other way. I love when they get like this. So nom. Okay. Keep going. I'm just going to crank that up to medium high. Just so that we got a little bit of reduction as well. <laughs> nice. Oh, most hilarious chats. I love it. Looks so yummy, thank you. Yeah, see how the cream is like starting to kind of glaze and coat the potatoes? And it reduces so quick in here. It's already really thick in the bottom. Sammy, <gasps> the meat's done? The meaty's done? Looks so yummy. Now that's just gonna rest. So yeah, see how it's kind of bubbling and thickening, reducing? We're almost there. I think I'm gonna add the tarragon. Not necessary. I just had it extra. Sammy's playing with the light so you can see the piece of meat. I'm making the potatoes right now though. This is really important. It's all on. Oh no, sorry. But I was just showing them how to do this and you switched it. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off. It's really, really bubbling up. And then I added all of the herbs. Look at this now. These guns are her own responsibility to pack up. <laughs> These guns are going to start slimming down. That's what's happening. 
Nom. And then just to cut through some of the richness, a little squeeze of lemon. And then we'll taste this and determine just how much salt and pepper we have to add. Yeah, so few ingredients, hey? So I'm just going to take this off of the burner so it doesn't keep cooking while we're tasting. Because, yeah, I had that pretty cranked. I don't want it to start sticking. But see how this just completely soaks everything up? Ah! Like, makes a delicious potato-y mess. That's exactly what we want here. It's almost like warm potato salad. Yeah! I've never had it cold dust just because the cream might be kind of weird. But yeah, it's almost like a warm potato salad. So I'm going to try and sneak maybe a smaller piece here. But that's exactly what we want. Yum. So it's really, really hot. So I'm going to let it cool off a bit. And I will do that one. That's the one. I'm on the stove top. Hi, cooking girl. So good to see you. Sorry if I missed you earlier. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Brings me back to childhood. Totally. Always reminds me of my grandparents. I love the tarragon in there. Okay, so just a really small amount of salt is all we need. And a few cracks of pepper. Other than that, it's perfection. Sounds good, Presto. I hope you have a wonderful day. And yeah, good for you for pushing yourself. Being a bit more social. We all need that a touch. Hi, Dust. Hi there. <laughs> and you've been looking cooking grill. I appreciate that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is our bit of salt. I think it only needs actually not even that much. Little bit like that. Not even a teaspoon. Crack our pep. How is the asparagus and the salmon? Pardon? Two minutes, on both. Two minutes on both of those things outside. Look at that timing. Did we message Paul yet? Yeah, he's coming on his way to go to school. Okay. So I did hang on to the lid here. Now that the potatoes are done, just pop a lid on there to keep them warm. Coming over here now our beautiful looking piece of meat. You tempt this, Sama? Yeah, it's not ready yet. We still have to sear it? Yeah. We're just resting right now. Okay. So that's still going. Holy though. If I hold this up, the color that we got on this piece of meat from cooking it in the Traeger, the redness, like that's from the smoke from the pellets. And you can also see the bit of marbling in there. Oh my gosh. This piece is going to be just unctuous. That's the guts. We're switching it out for the asparagus. We'll dress that with our compound butter. So how I test asparagus for being cooked, take the spear and if it bends like this, like almost in half, but doesn't snap, perfect. That way we know it's completely tender and it's not going to be mushy at the bottom here. If it would have broken right in half and kind of went like soggy, overcooked. If it kind of breaks, when we go to do the bend test, then it's undercooked. 
Yeah, really good tip, I think. Oh, thank you so much, Presto. You'll watch during the weekend. Love that. And yeah, typically when asparagus is perfectly cooked, it goes really nice deep green color. So now we're just going to distribute our chimichurri butter over this so it can soak in. Sammy's taking the, the salmon out of the oven as well. Are we going to do that seared outside or no? Just in the hot oven, you're thinking? Or do we want to just take the salmon out of the pan and sear it in there? I just take the salmon out and I think sear it in there. It'll go quicker, right? So now this is just going to melt on. And yeah, this is really hot, so don't let me touch it. Sometimes you even eat the woody part. Sometimes me too, Ice. It's true. If the spears are really nice, sometimes it's not even that woody, right? Okay, so next thing. One more pan. Oh, I guess I could have left that trivet there for the salmon pan. So this is the fish. How it turned out if we look at it. So that white liquid. Oh, my cloth's wet, so that's burning through. So the white liquid or the juices, that's like... We compare that always to what steak is like when you're cooking it and it starts to bleed. So that kind of shows you that you're getting closer to medium or medium well done. Now we just take our fishula. Should be able to sneak this out no problem. And finish resting that so the juices distribute. Yeah, crispy fish snack, so good. And now we're going to just pop this pan onto the stove top. And I'm just gonna sear up the meat in there. I mean, surf and turf, you can't be weird about your fish touching your beef, <laughs> right? <laughs> Peter Nine, thank you for the follow. Okay, so that was the hot side. I'm gonna put the frying pan back over there. So now let's switch on over. That again. Let's come back to this other burner. And now we can pop that on medium high and then the meat will only take a few moments. I'm just going to take a quick bathroom break while we're waiting. BRB. Okay, that is hot, hot, hot. So I'm just gonna snip the string off of the meat there. 
And then we're just going to do, I think, one uh, little quick sear on each side just to finish it off. I think I'll do this side last. That was the underside where it was resting. I'll do the dry side first to get a nice sear. So place that down. It <laughs> looks so good. Let that go for a few moments. That's why we only cook it to like just before medium rare so that we can account for this extra heat now and it won't get overcooked. Gonna grab a pair of tongs. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. Looks so good, hey Rook. Yeah. Thanks, Traeger. Okay, almost there. We're just getting some extra color on, which equals flavor at this point. I guess we're gonna need a nice cutting board out for this. The red almost looks fake. Like, did we put food color in on that? that way. Yeah. That looks good. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts, hey, Rook? Because that's the thing. When you do low and slow on the Traeger, you get more smoke action from the pellets compared to high heat, it burns very clean. So I'm very intrigued to see how this is going to taste. We'll do each end as well as best as we can just to seal everything in there. But there's a lot of love there. Go a bit more. Don't want to go too long because then we start to get to the point where we're going to overcook the meat. That's also why we have it at a nice high temp on the stove top. And a good amount of oil or fat in the pan really helps too. Hold it on that side. Can I reach? Can I reach, guys? The board. I'm just going to put it on the cutting board. So close. Yeah, it's jiggly, I know. That's why I kept kind of poking it, Rook. Okay, now that's the top side. Turn this off. Push it back so it can start to cool because that's a, whoa, smoking hot pan. Behind. Behind. Around. Oh. Sounds good, Nike, my dude. I hope you have a wonderful day at work. And thanks for hanging with us all day. Yeah, take care of yourself. I'm excited that you got a new car, right? <laughs> Just looked up to the wall of knives that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I need a slicing knife. <laughs> Where's yours? Just take the scimitar. To move you the scimitar? Just take it out, he says, but there's nowhere to open up my knife kit.
It doesn't exist anymore. She's just having a bunch of construction going on in her house. Basically what Keaton and I used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orca is getting, it looks like their water pipe system in the apartment is getting redone right now. So they're taking out all the old stuff that probably burst somewhere, right? And putting in new stuff or at least maintenance. So yeah, with her, I mean, we already know that Orca has sometimes rough sleeps, right? So it's definitely a disruption to her life. But yeah, she's been popping in Discord and letting us know how it's going. So that's all good. I have to say the guys doing the job are doing a nice job. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they're really taking care of her stuff. Yeah. It's done properly. And we're only seeing that out of experience. There's a, we've seen some pre messes. Yeah. Okay. So because we already rested this, I'm cutting into it and then we can build our plate. I'll give it a couple minutes. Okay, well, I'll build my plate first then and then cut it. Yeah. Away we go. Done with this one. Yeah, they had to bore through the concrete. So nuts. Okay, nice scoop of potatoes. That are probably going to change Paul's life today. Look at how those go on the plate. He's going to be like, no, you can't leave. Oh yeah, it was so cute. So we had our last pickup from one of the ladies the other day. And I was like, or she's like, make sure you keep us updated on how things go. And I was like, oh, we'll send photos and stuff so that you can see what we're working on. And she's like, well, I really appreciate that because it almost feels like we adopted you at this point. It was so <laughs> cute. Okay, so we have the choice with this salmon here, whether we want a whole big, big piece. I might only just kind of flake off the one side. This is the middle. Yeah, I would just So gently do that, and then we should be able to split it right in half. Nice one. Look at that. The juicy, the fat lines. So good. I think I'll put that one there. And just taking a handful of the asparagus. Look at how the butter has just completely melted in there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do something different. Pick that up, pop that, and go over there. Keep the meats kind of commingled together, and then the beef can go there. <laughs> and hi Clemmy, yeah, welcome in. We are doing great today. How are you? How are you doing? Okay, I'm just wiping the plate with my clean cloth here. Now I'm turning this again. So I'm gonna start by slicing from this side. Sam, do you think I should just trim off the extra muscles first? I might do this one since it's almost off already, and then this is kind of more compact yep. together. This looks so good. We crushed the cook on this. Just so you know what we're getting into. Holy. He says slice it, woman. <laughs> it's 
going pretty good. It's been a good day so far. That's right. great to hear. Thanks for popping by. Everybody always squeezes it. Yeah. It always makes us so mad when they squeeze the meat on social media. It's like, stop squeezing the juices out. Mm. And welcome in, happy phantom. I can't wait to eat this. Okay, so I'm gonna go like that thick for the first slice. I really suck at cooking. <laughs> Holy. That's why you do low and slow. Look at, there's no gray lines around that. It's just a beautiful piece of meat. I don't know what's wrong with me, but when I slice, it goes angled. Yes, please. You just know better. You know that's your one job. Everything, everything other than meat that I slice goes cockeyed. So when Sammy <laughs> slices vegetables or anything else, he cuts crooked and it goes weird. When I slice meats, I get such a weird line in it. It's like I'm almost being too careful. Yeah. Sammy was actually laughing at Fire Kitchen. Or no, you're talking about something else that they always squeeze their meat. And it's like, stop it. Sounds good, time okay? Holy, I bet that's insanely good. Yeah, tenderloin. Let's go by the name, Rook. It's so tender. Yeah. I think I want this little nuggy right here. Looks really good. Perfect. And then if you wanted, you can always pour the juices back onto the plate. I think we got enough fat in this meal today though that I don't need any more. Done with this. Matara. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a photo real quick. Mm. Oh yeah. Where's your phone? In your pocket. Good Gus. Mm -hmm. Is it like the sweetest ever? This should be the promo picture on Twitch for the channel, Annie. Would really draw people in. Thank you. I can't believe you think it looks that good. Thank you. I think I need to wipe this. I'm going to switch one thing on this plate. Salmon or king crab? <laughs> That's the thing, right? And if you look at the plating, it's not fancy at all. There's four components on the plate. Done very well. <laughs> the close-up photo. Yash. Yeah, where's my fork, Izzy? How are you doing? That's what I'm thinking of right now. Where's my fork? I mean, we probably don't need a knife, but I'll bring it. The same thing. Doggo. She's here for her Gus bottom. Has pretty much everything you could want. Okay. So first thing I'm going to get into is the beef because I'm just a beef person. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of fish here over the years, but this is really drawing my attention. Mm -hmm. The little bit of smoke from the Traeger. Mmm. It's like it concentrated the beef flavor or something. Like, I thought the tri-tip was good. This is insanely delicious. What the hell? <laughs> so it should honestly just melt in your mouth. Thanks, Joyce. 
So what would you say was the total time we cooked the beef for? Low and slow. An hour and a half? <laughs> That's funny. I was like, we'll do 225F for an hour and a half. But really we did probably closer when we even it out, like 200 Fahrenheit for an hour and a half to get this to medium rare. Yeah, all of that A1, hey? The hot sauce. Joyce, yeah, that too. too. Wait, Joyce is moving too? That's crazy. Okay, salmon. I mean, it should just flake like that. Oops. Just glistening on the fork. I'm watching this little river keep running. Mmm. There's good garlic flavor on the salmon from the chicken fat. Oh my gosh. Okay, just for vacation, Annie. Smelly like pee in like six hours. We process quick. Is there anyone in chat who doesn't smell stinky asparagus pee? Like, look at this even if I hold it up. The juices in that crevice. That's also how you know. You can just split that right there. That even looks way more unctuous. So this is king salmon, also known as Chinook or spring salmon. So some of the priciest, but also the best out of any salmon variety. I've had all of them. If you live in Canada or even somewhere close to the coast, you would know. Mmm. Okay, I want to have salmon with potato. That and that together is so good. Excuse you. Thank you. Anyone else just eat asparagus with their hands? Like you just munch it into your mouth? That's how I eat asparagus. Mmm. The chimmy butter on that? Mm -hmm. That's insanely good. Mm -hmm. How to eat vegetables. Just make a chimichurri butter. Take a little piece of steak and do it in the butter. Mm. Okay. Mm, yeah, green beans too. Cookie, good one. <laughs> it's just so easy. Keep pushing it on in. Okay, Sammy says we have to take a little piece of the meat and take that and dip it in the chimney butter from the asparagus that's on the pan. Oh, something like that. Mmm. Sammy just brought up our free game Thursday on the Epic Game Store. If we have any gamers in chat, there is three new games right now. Or just two. Oh, sorry. Just two. The rest are coming soon. So Sonic Mania, if there's any Sega fans or Sonic fans. Definitely picking that up. All right, my lovely crew. What a tasty, tasty meal. Set us up right for the rest of the day. Gonna keep doing a little bit of packing. Are you okay if I, yeah. or you're just finishing now? What a nice meal. It's like, I know there was like quite a bit of fat in the meal, but it doesn't feel that way when you eat it. It's really, really nice. Oh man, that was fantastic. Thank you. Okay, back to here. Yeah, taters and beef can't go wrong. Or if you're in Alaska, Mary says taters with salmon. Yes. Eating with your hands is the easiest way. Today, we have both. A surf and turf. Thanks, Bonk. Yeah, I actually finished a complete dish before Bonk had to go to work. 
Honestly, Don't wait till the last week or anything. <laughs> do you save a perfect bite with a little bit of everything at the end or is that just you? No, I typically do that as well. I would probably... The potatoes would probably be the last thing that I eat on the plate actually. Probably crush the beef first and then eat the salmon with the asparagus and crush the potatoes at the end. And yeah, we just made this in a couple hours together. Didn't really have too much help from Sam along the way, right? In three hours, yeah. And if you want to cook something like this for yourself at home, make sure you save all the recipes that we linked. They do a very good job of explaining everything that you need to do. Yeah, same here, Rook. Glad you got to spend like a whole day here. Izzy's finished the plate three times over already. <laughs> and thank you very much, Lauren, for hanging out in the background today. You know we appreciate that. Did you try a potato yet? Oh, yeah. Is yummies? Yeah, really it passes? Okay. Yeah. It passes, friends. So tomorrow, we're going to be back again, cooking up on Twitch. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Oh, we're doing duck confit. A duck confit pasta. So duck leg confit that we made ourselves in the Anova in the sous vide. So we just clear, cured the legs overnight with salt, sugar, herbs, pepper. And then you cook the legs slowly in duck fat until they fall off the bone. We'll pick the meat tomorrow. And then using up some stuff from the pantry. I have these kind of fancy little German egg noodles, but they're porcini mushroom flavored. So we'll cook those up tomorrow. We got, those from we got these in New York. You think so? I thought maybe we got them from Fairway here. But either way, we have a beautiful porcini pasta. Easy peasy. I know it's weird for me to not make homemade pasta. <laughs> Going with the confit, and I think we'll do zucchini with it tomorrow. And then we're also making the pizza dough on stream tomorrow for our last, our last pizza party. Very small scale though. We're only making like three pizzas, I think, instead of the typical 12. Oh yeah, that's right, Master of Splits. <laughs> we're going to Forte's tomorrow. There's no stream, remember, Kate? Remember? Yeah, let me guess, Detroit style. Could we have it any other way, Annie? I think we would get in heck. We'd get questions about what exactly we're doing here. Okay, belch of approval for the chef. <laughs> Excuse me. It was very good. <laughs> I'm just uh, creeping along, seeing who we're gonna go raid today. Oh, we got Hanby on? Yeah. Oh, yes. Han B is making japchae, stir-fried Korean glass noodles. Yum! I've never made this before and I've always been quite intrigued to make it. So we're gonna go raid another food and drink streamer, my wonderful peeps. Let's go support Han B. I mean, I kind of have to ask why he's streaming and just chatting, but we're gonna go support Han B. <laughs> just saying, right? And other than that, we'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, another kind of easy cooking stream. I know some of you or most thought that it wasn't going to happen this week. It's happening. We're doing it. Finish it up. We're very, we're very well off on our time. Yeah, we feel good, right? Okay. Love you. Stay safe. Stay healthy wherever you are. Thank you for the amazing hype train, all the resubs, the biddies, the followers. Welcome in if you're new here. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.